This episode of GT the Podcast is supported by Alcon. This is Ike Ahmed. And I'm Arsham Shabani. And we want to welcome you to GT the Podcast. We're bringing this to you together with BMC and Glaucoma Today. To offer audible insights into current topics in glaucoma care. Presented by the authors of our latest, most read GT articles. Check it out. Welcome to GT The Podcast. In this episode, Dr. Jay Patel recaps his article, Masqueraders of Normal Tension Glaucoma, co-authored with Dr. Amanda D. Henderson and featured in the May-June issue of Glaucoma Today. Several types of non-glaucomatous optic neuropathy can mimic normal tension glaucoma, and clinicians should be careful not to miss these causes in patients with gradually progressive optic neuropathy. This article outlines four categories to consider aside from glaucoma. More on this now from Dr. Patel. Normal tension glaucoma is an optic neuropathy characterized by optic nerve head cupping, retinal nerve fiber layer thinning, and corresponding visual field loss. The absence of high IOP makes the diagnosis of glaucoma more challenging, and this feature should prompt consideration of other causes of optic neuropathy. Clinicians must not miss masqueraders of normal tension glaucoma because the underlying etiology could be sight-threatening and also reversible with appropriate treatment. Aside from glaucoma, four Broad categories to consider in the setting of gradually progressive optic neuropathy include compressive lesions, toxicity, hereditary and nutritional etiologies, and optic disc drusen. Compressive optic neuropathy typically progresses slowly and is often characterized by dyschromatopsia out of proportion to the patient's visual acuity. In contrast, the visual acuity and color vision of patients with normal tension glaucoma are often preserved until late in the disease course. Although compressive optic neuropathy is generally expected to present more with pallor than cupping, cupping can develop in the setting of a compressive lesion, thereby complicating the diagnostic process. Compressive lesions can produce a variety of visual field defects, some of which may mimic glaucoma. However, visual field defects respecting the vertical meridian, such as homonymous or bitemporal field defects, and markedly asymmetric or unilateral field defects should raise suspicion for a non-glaucomatous process. Although compressive lesions can present with associated symptoms such as headache, double vision, and proptosis, patients are often asymptomatic aside from a visual decline. Thus, it is important to maintain a high index of suspicion for compressive optic neuropathy in a patient with suggestive features. These individuals require an MRI of the brain and orbits with and without contrast, specifically with fat saturation sequences. Prompt neuroimaging may identify lesions that are amenable to treatment, which may improve not only the patient's vision, but also other neurologic outcomes. An MRI is superior to a CT scan for the evaluation of soft tissue structures, such as the optic nerves, chiasm, and tracts in these cases. Because fat is typically bright on MRI studies, orbital fat may obscure more subtle lesions, such as optic nerve sheath meningiomas. However, with fat saturation, This intrinsic signal is effectively suppressed, leading to improved detection of contrast-enhancing 
orbital tumors that would otherwise be hidden by fat. Communication with the reading radiologist is paramount, and the ordering physician should specify the precise reason for the MRI study in the order indication. For example, rather than list, quote, vision changes as the indication, request, quote, attention to right optic nerve concern for optic neuropathy. This approach encourages the radiologist to review the pertinent structures carefully and reduces the risk that a causative lesion will be overlooked. Toxic optic neuropathy usually presents as gradually progressive bilateral optic neuropathies. These are commonly characterized by central or secocentral field defects and occasionally by bitemporal field defects. When field defects are not classically glaucomatous, reviewing a patient's current and past medications and inquiring about a history of ethanol and tobacco use can be helpful. Ethambutol may cause a progressive bilateral toxic optic neuropathy with central, secocentral, or bitemporal field defects. Ethambutol optic neuropathy has an incidence of 1% to 5%, generally occurring two to eight months after initiation of the drug, the condition may lead to visual symptoms, commonly including early dyschromatopsia. Risk factors include diabetes mellitus, chronic renal failure, alcoholism, older age, concomitant ethambutol-induced peripheral neuropathy, and a daily dose of ethambutol exceeding 15 milligrams per kilogram. If ethambutol toxicity is suspected, communication with the prescribing physician to recommend urgent drug cessation is appropriate. Hereditary and nutritional optic neuropathies can present similarly to toxic optic neuropathy and should be considered if a patient has slowly progressive bilateral optic neuropathy and central or secocentral scotomas. In this setting, a history of a parent with a slowly progressive visual decline may raise suspicion for a dominant optic atrophy, whereas a history of conditions that may lead to malabsorption, such as inflammatory bowel disease and bariatric surgery, or limited diets may increase suspicion for a nutritional optic neuropathy. If nutritional optic neuropathy is suspected, serum labs to check red blood cell folate, vitamin B12, and thiamine may help identify a treatable cause for the vision loss. Most patients with optic disc drusen are asymptomatic, but formal visual field testing often shows visual field loss that closely resembles glaucomatous visual field defects, such as nasal steps or arcuate visual field defects. Unlike the cupped appearance of a glaucomatous nerve, optic nerves with disc drusen usually appear full and sometimes elevated. The identification of drusen with biomicroscopy alone can sometimes be challenging. Enhanced depth imaging OCT is a powerful tool that can help identify these deposits. Once the presence of drusen is confirmed, patients can be reassured that specific treatment typically is not required. Several non-glaucomatous optic neuropathies can mimic normal tension glaucoma, and each requires a specific treatment approach. In cases that are atypical for glaucoma, a careful review of the patient's clinical history, visual acuity, color vision, 
and visual field pattern may raise suspicion for a possible mimic of normal tension glaucoma and prompt further imaging or laboratory evaluations. Thank you for tuning into this episode of GT the Podcast. If you have any feedback or topic suggestions, find us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. And stay tuned for more hot topics in glaucoma care on GT the Podcast. Thank you.